Oil prices have been skyrocketing. Energy is the best performing sector on the S&P 500 this year. What does that tell us about the demand and appetite for ESG investments today? Well, if you actually look at uh, the performance of ESG investments, and perhaps the kind of deepest market is the debt labelled, ESG labelled bonds, um, they are actually performing and are more resilient than the broader market. So I think we'll probably see just under a trillion dollars worth of issuance when you're looking at ESG labelled bonds this year, um, down around 17% relative to last year. But if you look at the broader market, uh, Moody's is saying that broader market would be down around 27% this year. So as an asset class, it's actually held up reasonably well. But um, I think part of the narrative, I suppose, in a way, is that inevitably there has to be a tension between the short-term needs of energy security uh, and the long-term need for sustainability. And actually, we think you've you've got to do both. They're not mutually exclusive. Actually, they go hand in hand. And we were never going to be in a position uh, to move off of fossil fuels, which are, what, 80%, uh, meeting 80% of our energy needs at the moment, straight into other alternative forms of renewables, because we just don't have those at scale to replace fossil fuels as an energy source. So in, in the short term, in a way, we were going to always be continuing to use oil and gas, certainly. The medium to longer term, obviously, the desire and what society needs is to move to something different. The latest numbers suggest we're needing around $2 trillion to help developing nations when it comes to climate action. But this is, of course, at a time when the developed world is suffering from high inflation, there are worries, obviously, about recession, and there's a war in Ukraine. In your mind, how much of this can really be put on the private sector? Because the head of the IMF told me governments can't do this alone. No, I, I mean, you need the public and the private sectors to work in partnership to deliver this. And so, of course, there's a huge amount of finance that you can raise in markets. I mean, we have a commitment as a bank to finance and facilitate $2.5 trillion um, through to 2030 from 2021 to deliver against the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And a trillion of that is reserved for climate. But there are certain things that only governments can do. Um, You know, our view is that unless you have a price on carbon, and it could be cap and trade mechanisms of or carbon taxes, you're not going to get the allocation of capital needed. And that's not something that we can do. That's a public policy issue. But what's really interesting, I think, as we gather here um, in, in, in Egypt, is the developed developing world um, kind of conundrum here. Because even if we meet our commitments uh, in the OECD countries to decarbonize, uh, that will be more than wiped out, if you like, the benefit of that wiped out by the the growth in population uh, and and economies in the emerging world. Um, And, you know, at the moment we're looking, you know, our equity um, thematic research is saying that by 2030 there's going to be a 20% delta between energy supply and demand because of that happening. And that says that unless you um, work out how you're going to fund the transition, in the emerging world, which you know contributes around 65% or more emissions at the moment, then we're not going to actually get to the net zero world that we here talked about so often.